Millionaires charging fans for autographs? Insulting them through the media? Fighting them with sharpened cleats? Stay tuned to find out which athletes treat their fans like trash. Not only does Michael Jordan top almost every list as the greatest basketball player to have ever laced them up, you can also catch the six-time champion, billionaire, and owner of the Charlotte Hornets atop almost any list, ranking the best to ever do it across any field of play. So what's his beef with fans? It's not like they haven't been supportive. MJ once held both the record for biggest NBA contract ever and the best-selling NBA jersey of all time. Yet he has a history of being ruthless to fans, just as he was to competitors back when he was in the league, as anyone who has seen the documentary The Last Dance can attest. Can you just sign this real quick? Man, I'm a collect, man. You owe me a thousand bucks. <laughs> On the one hand, it's his competitiveness which helped him become the legendary player he was, but it also rubbed some people the wrong way. A group of kids at a Chris Paul camp witnessed this after the Phoenix Suns point guard bet Jordan that the entire basketball camp would get free Jordans if he missed three shots. Like a menace, Jordan sank all the shots in a now viral video. Cam Newton, at one point, was one of the brightest NFL stars to grace the gridiron. We're talking about an athlete who went from playing junior college at Blinn College to winning a Heisman and a national championship at Auburn and taking the Carolina Panthers to the Super Bowl. Given his down-to-earth underdog story, one would think Newton would be relatable to the average citizen. Well, if one did happen to think that, they'd be incorrect. It appears there have been several instances that NFL career leader and quarterback rushing touchdowns has treated his supporters unfairly, from allegedly charging fans to sign photographs to getting into altercations with fans of opposing teams. According to Pro Football Talk, the photo incident happened at a North Carolina mall where fans were charged $125 for a signed photograph, $150 for a football, and $175 for a jersey. Oh, and if you wanted a personal message, that was another $50. Mind you, this is a man with a net worth of $75 million. But wait, there's more. Flag and Cross reports that the former New England Patriot once acted as if he was going to sign a young fan's item before faking them out and throwing it in the garbage can. According to the Chicago Tribune, former Chicago Bears linebacker and NFL Hall of Famer Brian Erlacher reportedly once said, two of the people I don't care about, fans or media. The quote came after he was asked if fans and media would be critical of his then head coach Lovey Smith following a loss. He went on to say that he was annoyed by any fan criticism and added, those people don't know what they're talking about, obviously. The reason for Erlacher's comments was that he was upset that the Bears were booed by their own fans when they played home games. Being frustrated is perfectly understandable, but publicly coming at your fan base is another thing, especially since it was that same fan base that allowed him to become the highest paid player in Bears history at one point. Were you a bully? Uh, yeah, yeah, I was a bully. Is there a clearer message to a fan base that they're unappreciated than an athlete's non-remorseful admission to cheating the sport they all are supposed to collectively love? Despite the pay and privilege disparity, doesn't it all come down to the love of the game at the end of the day? If so, it's certainly not the case for Lance Armstrong. Forget the fact that Armstrong won seven straight Tour de France championships from 1999 through 2005. More importantly, the American cyclist had become a hero as fans rallied around his story of beating an advanced testicular cancer. He even sold 100 million Livestrong bracelets in eight years. And it's that kind of support that makes Armstrong's lack of remorse about using steroids that more shocking. According to HuffPost, in his sit-down with Oprah, he was anything but apologetic, saying, "'Everybody that gets caught is bummed out they got caught.'" Although people seem to still believe Canadians to be the nicest human beings on Earth, former NHL player Rob Ray could possibly change that perception. For starters, the Ontario native used to get into it on the ice. According to Celebrity Hockey Classics, Ray racked up 700 penalty minutes playing two full seasons with the Rochester Americans of the American Hockey League. Then, once making his NHL debut with the Sabres, his enforcer style continued as he amassed the most penalty minutes in NHL history for a player with one team. By the time he ended his career, he was sixth overall in NHL history for most penalty minutes. Well, Ray took his enforcer role seriously, even with fans, as he once viciously beat a guy who approached the team's bench from the stands. While reports say the fans' actions were due to a wager, Ray obviously didn't find it funny. Hitting the fan are reported 17 or 18 times before the cops finally got there. 
Floyd Mayweather is one of the highest paid athletes of all time, having won over $1 billion in prize money over his career. According to Insider, the boxer nicknamed Money has purchased a $50,000 diamond iPod case, had a candy shop in his own house at one point, and reportedly buys new underwear and sneakers every day. To put it frankly, he's not hurting for loot. So it was a surprise when, talking to radio personality Kelly Mack, he confessed that he does not feel obligated to give to charities, specifically in Africa, saying, People say, well, he got all his money, why is he not giving to Africa? Well, what has Africa given to us? What has Africa came and gave to my children and to my family? Things work two ways. Floyd also might be tone deaf, considering his stance on social issues. While people were boycotting Gucci due to blackface allegations associated with a controversial sweater, Mayweather decided to buy them all up, telling TMZ that he would wear what he wanted to wear and saying, I support everybody. I like everybody. My thing is this. I like to live life and do what I like to do. Brooklyn Nets forward Kevin Durant, who averages about $40 million a year from his basketball salary alone, has millions of followers both on Twitter and Instagram, something he doesn't particularly care for. To say the Maryland native is in a position of influence is an understatement, yet Durant seems to shrug off being a role model. In fact, the high road is a foreign land to the two-time champ, who will clap back at fans, former athletes, and even kids during games, on Twitter, Instagram, or wherever you come at him. He's even bizarrely admitted to utilizing burner accounts on social media to anonymously defend himself. Why is Tiger Woods, arguably golf's biggest figure over the past 25 years, unappreciative of his loyal and disciplined fan base? There have been several examples of how the man with 15 major championship victories has treated his fans poorly or just generally displayed rude behavior. According to GNN, a traveler at a private airport that Woods visited was so appalled at the golfer's behavior towards the staff that he wrote an open letter to the Providence Journal's Letters to the Editor page to chastise him. In an article from Bleacher Report, they ranked Woods as the number one most arrogant golfer of all time. Steve Sharippa, an actor from The Sopranos, went out of his way to call out Woods on his podcast, Talking Sopranos. As far as Tiger Woods, a f horrible human being. Bad tipper, right? Is that what you said? The worst tipper. To top it all off, according to another report from Showbiz Cheat Sheet, Woods allegedly blew off Bill Clinton for the longest time after the president requested an autographed picture of them playing golf together. Jose Canseco is probably most infamously known for his steroid use. The former Oakland athletic slugger even talked about it in his appropriately titled memoir, Juiced, writing, Steroids, used correctly, will not only make you stronger and sexier, they will also make you healthier. But beyond him taking steroids, which shows a disregard for the integrity of the game and the fans, Canseco simply wasn't nice. The New York Times reported that he once threatened to bash in a fan's head after incorrectly hearing the fan make a racial slur. Similarly, Canseco has been caught sending his twin brother in place of himself at autograph signings and, according to the Chicago Tribune, challenged a fan to a fight once. Barry Bonds doesn't really hide his disdain for fans, no matter how loyal and genuine of a supporter you are. Barry, this is one of our radio announcers. Uh, Joe Buck, you know, Jack Buck, this is his kid. And Barry's like, so? For example, according to Daily Camera, a fan once lamented to Bonds that he'd been trying to get his autograph for years, only to get the response, I want you to keep your streak active. In another instance, the San Francisco slugger ripped a 12-year-old fan's card that was given to him to sign. Since retiring, he's admitted to leaning into the villain role, though he revealed some regret in an interview with Sports on Earth, saying, I mean, I was just flat out dumb. What can I say? I'm not going to try to justify the way I acted toward people. I was stupid. It wasn't an image that I invented on purpose. No one wants to be treated like that because I was considered to be a terrible person. You'd have to be insane to want to be treated like that. That makes no sense. Hall of Fame baseball player Ty Cobb, while great at the sport, was vile both on and off the field. Cobb played with the Detroit Tigers from 1905 to 1926, and the Detroit Metro Times once described him as a, quote, bigot with a short temper and a penchant for sadism. Some of his antics include sharpening his cleats, then sliding feet first into bases with his heel high so that he might injure an opponent. It was alleged in an episode of Sports Century that he attacked a black groundskeeper when he was unsatisfied with the field condition and then attacked the man's wife when she came to defend him. Arguably, according to the Hardball Times, his worst offense came after he took his sharpened cleats and used them to attack a heckling fan. To somehow make matters worse, the fan had lost most of his fingers in an accident and couldn't defend himself. 
John McEnroe was as bright of a star as they came on the tennis court back in the day. The Hall of Famer has 155 career titles, is still highly ranked in singles and doubles, and has a career-winning percentage of 82.4%. A part of his success, however, was due to his ferocity. No one was safe from his temperament while he was on the court, not even the fans. In one game in particular, McEnroe was heckled by a spectator after he questioned a line call during a game. According to sources, the tennis legend quipped back, you got an appointment to get to? Then, according to the Orlando Sentinel, there was the incident where, after a loss to fellow German tennis player Boris Becker, he told a German fan to, quote, go eat some wiener schnitzel, pal. Albert Bell could possibly be called the John McEnroe of baseball in that he had a mean temper and didn't care who saw it. The 90s baseball star had tons of power and absolutely no clue on how to contain it, which, unfortunately, turned out bad for fans at times, as his reputation for losing it followed him on every level. When Bell was in college, for example, ESPN reports he was suspended for going after a heckling fan into the stands. Then, while in the minors, he was fined $5,000 for directing an obscene gesture to fans. Similarly, when a fan was heckling Bell about his alcohol problem in the majors, they received a fastball to the chest. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite sports stars are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.